We have devoted the last couple of videos to understand adiabatic gas expansions. In the first video, we have set up uh, what that gas uh, expansion is and calculated the change in internal energy in the adiabatic work. Now, in the second video, we have seen a relationship between the initial temperature and volume of the gas and the final temperature and volume, and we have that expression right here. Okay, uh, what that C is just a ratio of the heat capacity at constant volume uh, over R. Okay, so what we're going to be doing in this video here is uh, try to find a similar relationship but considering the change in pressure and volume, right? So what is the relationship between the initial pressures and volumes of the gas and then the final pressure and volume? Okay, our starting point is actually this expression in which we're going to be taking the C order root of that expression. Okay, so when you take the C order root, then uh, you get to something that looks like this, one over C, T to the one, and then V2, one over C, and then T2. Okay, all right, so uh, let's run with this. Uh, we're going to consolidate here temperatures and volumes. So we're going to have T1 over T2 is going to be equal to uh, V2 over V1 to the 1 over C. Okay, all right, so let's uh, try to work a little bit uh, more what that 1 over C is. Okay, so um, notice that uh, that 1 over C now is going to be equal to R over CVM. Okay, what well that is the heat capacity, molar heat capacity at constant volume. Okay, it turns out that we actually uh, know that that R constant is a fundamental relationship between the heat capacities at constant pressure and constant volume of an ideal gas. In earlier work, we have seen that indeed uh, the relationship between heat capacities of an ideal gas is this one. Right, so notice that, that R is simply the difference between the heat capacity at constant pressure and the heat capacity at constant volume. Right, so what we can actually do is simply replace that R by CPM minus CVM. Okay, all right, uh, that's fine. Then uh, we can define a new term that is going to be equal to gamma, which is just the ratio of the heat capacities, CPM over CVM. And then when we, when we do that, notice that you will have here gamma uh, 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 minus 1, right? So all of that exponent simply turns into uh, gamma minus 1. Okay, so this looks like a fairly useful uh, expression right here. Okay, and that's what we, uh, uh, what we work with next. Okay, so uh, so far we have not incorporated pressures into this expression. Uh, but notice that this is an ideal gas. So the ideal gas equation of state should be satisfied throughout uh, the process. Okay, so we can actually uh, replace that T1 uh, uh, using the ideal gas equation of state. So that is going to be equal to uh, P1 V1 over NR. And that T2 is going to be P2 V2 over NR. And again, this just comes from uh, applying the ideal gas equation of state uh, to solve for those temperatures as a function of the pressure. Okay, so uh, we can erase that. Uh, notice that those NR terms cancel as well, so we can erase them uh, likewise. P1, V1, okay, and uh, that's uh, uh, your next expression. Now what we can do is just uh, uh, multiply both sets of expression by V2 over V1, and when we do that, we come up with an expression that looks like this. V2 over V1, and we recognize that uh, this is simply to con simple to consolidate, right? Uh, uh, notice that that expression now is going to look like uh, P1 over P2 is going to be equal to uh, V2 over V1 to the gamma. Okay, so this sets up uh, sets up our final expression for the relationship of initial pressures and volumes, and the final pressures and volumes where you're going to have P1 V1 to the gamma is going to be equal to P2 V2 to the gamma, where gamma is just the ratio of heat capacities uh, of that ideal gas. Okay, so uh, we're done with adiabatic gas expansions. We have seen uh, the foundations, right? So what do they, uh, what uh, uh, gas, uh, an adiabatic gas expansion really is, how to calculate the work, how to calculate internal energy. 
And then we've seen relationships between the initial uh, variables that define the physical state, pressure, temperature, volume, and the final uh, variables of that physical state.